In this video, we're going to talk about how to determine the net force acting on an object. There are many forces acting on an object at any given time, and that's whether an object is in motion or it's at rest. The net force is the sum of all the forces acting on an object. Usually we use the symbol capital F and then we just write a subscript net to indicate the net force. When the net force on an object is not equal to zero, then the object will accelerate. When the net force is equal to zero, then the object will not accelerate and it will either remain at rest or remain at its current velocity. Let's look at a very simple situation. Here's my coffee cup sitting on the counter. This coffee cup has two forces acting on it. First of all, it has the force of gravity, which is pulling the coffee cup downwards. And I'm going to indicate that using a downwards arrow. We usually label the force of gravity F subscript G. Now, due to Newton's third law, there's going to be a force that's equal and opposite to gravity acting on this object as well. It's actually the force of the table holding this object up. This is going to be exactly equal to the force of gravity and in the opposite direction. We call this force the normal force. And the normal force is the force uh, that opposes gravity when something's on a surface. If this coffee cup had a mass of 150 grams, then we could calculate the force of gravity by using the equation F equals MA. The acceleration due to gravity is a constant. We actually use the symbol G and it's going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and solve for the force of gravity. I can rearrange this equation to use that symbol, just replacing the A with the G. And let's plug in what we know. First of all, we do need to change the mass into SI units, which is kilograms. So I'll divide this by 1,000 to get kilograms. And so I've plugged in the mass and the acceleration due to gravity. And so the force of gravity is equal to 1.47 newtons. And the SI unit for force uh, is newtons. Now the normal force would be exactly equal and opposite to the force of gravity. So I could say that the normal force would be equal to negative 1.47 newtons and so the negative would indicate that it's in the opposite direction. Now if I were to add these two together I would get the net force and so the net force would be zero. Okay let's try a bit of a tougher problem. This problem says a boy is pulling a wagon along a sidewalk with an acceleration of 0 0.1 meters per second horizontally. The wagon has a mass of 4.5 kilograms and the boy is pulling the handle at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. What force is the boy applying to the wagon? Before we go any further, let's just write down what we know about this situation. I've underlined the things we know in green, and then I've also underlined the thing we want to know in red. So here's all the information I know, and I'm even going to label the direction of the force that the boy is applying. So he's applying it along this handle at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. And I also know that the acceleration of the wagon is going to be uh, moving horizontally. And so it's actually going to be going straight in this direction. Now I know that the equation for force is F equals MA. And I do know mass and I do know acceleration. When I solve for force by just using the numbers that I have right here, I'm going to find force in the horizontal direction. So I can solve for force in the horizontal direction, and then I can use SOHCAHTOA, you know, those trigonometry things here, the sine of theta, the angle, is equal to the opposite side uh, over the horizontal side, just a quick way to remember. Uh, and the reason I can use this is because I can just kind of pretend that this is a right angle triangle. So I'll actually be solving for the bottom part of this triangle right here. And then using these trigonometry functions here, I can solve uh, for the hypotenuse of this triangle. So let's start by solving for the force in the horizontal direction here. So I plugged in the numbers that I know, the mass and the acceleration, 
and I'll solve for force, and force is going to be equal to 0 0.450 newtons. And remember, that's the bottom side of that triangle. So to find the angle here, because since it's, he's pulling at a 30 degree angle, I can use cosine here because, I'll write this out here, because the cosine of theta, that's my 30 degree angle there, is going to be equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And I want to find how long the hypotenuse is. The adjacent side I have right here, what I just solved for, that's the bottom part of this triangle. So I'm going to be solving for this hypotenuse. So I do know the angle, I know that's going to be 30 degrees. And I now know the adjacent side as well. So let me rearrange this equation. And then I can plug in the adjacent side, which again is what I just solved for with force. And the cosine of the angle of 30 degrees. So cosine of 30 degrees. And so the hypotenuse of this triangle, which is going to be equal to the force, is equal to, I'm just going to change hypotenuse the symbol to F, because I'm actually solving for force. It's going to be 0 0.520 newtons. And I'm just going to include there at, that's just an at symbol, 30 degrees. So I'm saying 30 degrees above the horizontal. And so that's the force that the boy is actually applying on the wagon. In the next video, we'll solve a little bit of a more difficult net force problem. Should be this one right here. But that's a brief introduction to how to calculate net force of an object.